Red Balloon Rock Talk. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's another awesome episode of Lead Balloon Rock Talk. And I'm Mark, and this is my brother, Jim. And hey. we do this about every week. We get on here and we talk about all kinds of stuff related to rock and roll. Today is no exception. I think we got something pretty fun for you. Uh, we decided to come up with a list of songs that have killer introductions. I don't know how else to best explain it, but it could be your favorite introduction, whatever. But we thought it would be interesting to, to kind of come up with a list of, of really interesting songs, I think, that uh, exemplify what a good intro into a song or a good lead into a song really is. And there's so many examples out there. My, by far, you know, once I st we started putting this list together, we realized we could just go on and yeah, on. Yeah, it was on. tough. So I think really, as you listen to our list, you can certainly add to it. Um, but we're going to do something fun at the very end and we're going to do something fun at the beginning. So we're going to give you a list of five songs that didn't make our list. Um, it's not that it, we didn't want it on there. It's we debated it back and forth and we said, OK, yeah, they have merit, but maybe not quite to the extent that these others do. So without further ado, and I know I say that, but yep. uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you take over here, Jim, yep. and give that, that runner up list. So go okay. ahead and do that and then we'll break into the real list. All right. And then and, and just a reminder that um, so the five runner ups that I'm going to mention here um i don't have links down below but all, for our main list there's a link to a video for every song and i tried to find some interesting not just some of them you had there'll be just a straight ahead video the official video that they made but i f was able to find quite a few uh live performances which uh shows the bands in action so we hope right. that if you uh, if we trigger a, a memory of a song or, or if there's a song that we talk about that you're not familiar with, uh, please check it out from the links below. So the five runner ups, um, the first one was the white stripes, seven nation army. Why well, did we pick that one? That's a, that was a good one. Why we didn't go with that one. Yeah. And, uh, I, uh, you know, I think, you know, this opening bass lick and you hear it in sports, uh, arenas all the time now, but, uh, um, uh, again, so I think maybe this is setting up what our main list will be like um, when when songs like this don't make it. Second one is Rush, Tom Sawyer, oh, man. with the uh, opening synthesizer hit and drums, and uh, you know it, it's an iconic opening. Very, you instantly know what song it is. Third one, Kansas, Carry On Your Wayward Son, with the opening um, uh, lyrics being sung. Um, just a, a killer opening and then Steppenwolf Born to be Wild and here's a band that you don't really listen to anymore you know what I mean yeah, it's you don't hear very much. off the radar because well gosh they've been they've been gone for so long out of the yeah. music industry but yep. yeah and then finally the fifth one is Van Halen Hot for Teacher and uh, with with the with the great opening drum solo and uh, yeah so those are the five runner ups and so with that in mind, let's get into our main list. And yeah, Mark, cool. why don't you take now, it away? Before we just jump into that, it's kind of cool that we segue from Van Halen's Hot for Teacher because both of us are teachers. So I don't consider myself very hot. So I do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's wrong. That's so <laughs> just don't No, No, bad, bad. So I was I was sharing this with uh, this concept this week with my my building principal and it was really funny because he actually started naming some of the songs that we had on the list and that was really uh -huh. cool. He's uh, he's a great guy who enjoys listening to rock just as much as we do. So I enjoy having conversations with him and he also plays guitar, which is really neat too. Ah, cool. Uh, yeah, good. It's, that's not something you normally find in your principal at, yeah. uh, at a school. It's good stuff. That's all right. Cool. So let's get into this list. All right. I think most people who, if you watch this video, you'll see how our brains are firing, I think. And you might go, okay, I get that. So here's our first one. And we have to step way back a little bit because got to do this. Chuck Berry, Johnny Be Good. It's been covered a lot of times by many uh, people. But come on, let's go. That lyric is that lick in the beginning. 
sets everything. Well, he basically established the riff style rock song. Yeah, and there's just so much you can talk about up. in. Yep. It, it's just perfect, and I think Chuck Berry, Johnny Be Good is is rightfully supposed to be at the very top here. So, yep. uh, now I keep that in mind as I say all the rest of these because we didn't put them in any kind of order. Um, but yeah, these are not so, in numeric order as what we consider yeah, no. to be the top song or whatever. So yeah, it's too difficult to try to to do that, and I yep. think unfair as well because every song is unique. So yep. anyway, we got the Who, and we have a twofer on that one. We have Bob O'Reilly, can't go wrong with the synthesizer, etc. There, and really classic, won't get fooled again. I mean, yep. there's a lot of classic Who songs in there. We could probably name at least two more. Oh yeah, he's on the list, but I think. You know, when we talked about this, we were both in agreement that these two are very high on the list, if not the, the reason they're here. So. And they both can't come from the same album. Who's next? Yeah, I mean, what a freaking awesome album that is. Yeah, Just everything yeah. on that is yep. incredible. Yep. Um, and uh, Heart, Barracuda. Ah, come on, the Wilson sisters, Barracuda. Who doesn't yep. sing that song at the top of their lungs of the car? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, why don't you go ahead and hit a couple more? Yes, yeah, so our next one is Yes, Roundabout, with the opening guitar harmonics and uh, just kind of sets the, the, the mood of that piece. And um, again, and, and Yes is another one of those that we could have probably named a ton of killer sure. intros. Uh, next, Bruce Springsteen, and this was a little bit tricky too, but we chose Born in the USA. You know, that uh, iconic keyboard lick that, that repeats itself throughout the whole entire song. But again, it's um, um, uh, we felt that it was such an iconic intro to, to, uh, to a song. Next, can't go wrong with ACDC and Thunderstruck. Oh my God, there's so many different ACDC songs we could yep. have chosen. Yep. And I think the majority of people would agree that, you know, once you hear that little thunder rumble you know that plate metal whatever they're shaking in the background yeah i uh, you know you you know it's coming yeah it, it's kind of like that big build up you know it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming and all of a sudden and you hear the guitar come in there yep it's just it's it's perfect and <laughs> simple as it is it's perfect and i yep. think you'll hear a couple other of our picks like that where it's very simple uh, as an intro and sometimes it's the most effective <clears throat> Definitely. And then um, uh, Bon Jovi wanted dead or alive. That and, is where that is. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, that, that the, the 12 string guitar sound and um, just kind of really sets the tone of, of that piece. Absolutely. So, yeah. Let's go on. All right, excellent. So another two for here, and of course, there's reasons for all this, but we chose Pink Floyd, both money and time. And, you know, Dark Side of the Moon is a unique album when it came out, and there's so much that can be talked about just with that album alone. Um, but they were setting some standards with that album that had not been done in the music industry at all. And I think, yeah. you know, when they're playing around with these pre-recorded sounds and doing these intros, when people heard that for the first time, they were blown away because it wasn't instrumental in any way. And the title of the song goes with these intro sound effects and it's just it was just mind-bending and mind-blowing at the time and it still stands the test of time get it <laughs> uh, um, and i think that's really where we're at so well and and uh you know it's it was a technique called music concrete which uh, uh which established in the european uh, classical avant-garde classical music scene back in the 40s and 50s and Pink Floyd took that technique and really put it into the pop realm um, even to this day every time those clocks come in on time it just it, it's startling because it's they've created this mood of quietness prior to that and all of a sudden it kicks in with the the clocks it, it can be startling but um, but it's so musical in its uh, sound as well so and again here's another case where both songs are on the same album like the who yeah can't go wrong with that yeah and uh moving forward we go into black sabbath war pigs yeah. you know heck of a tune and again there's a band right here where there's a lot of 
you know, a lot of interesting openings to different songs, and we could have chosen a number of ones. I really wanted to pick Iron Man. I think that's a really classic. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm really satisfied with, you know, hanging yeah. out with uh, with uh, War Pigs. Uh, it yeah. definitely is a very classic opener, and I'm, I'm good with that. So um, I'm going to do one more here, yeah. and that's the Eagles Hotel California has to be on everyone's list for sure i mean yep. you strike the first two notes everyone knows the song yep uh, even even people who don't really listen to classic rock and roll may have heard this song at one time in their life and they resonate with that and that's such a, a well-crafted well-written song i know i've said that about other songs too but you know generally when a band hits the right chord you yep. know magic happens and that's a song that's uh, perfect i think in a sense well and you think about what the purpose of the intro is it is designed to capture people's attention to grab people's attention right. and to set the tone or the mood of the song and uh you know and here's a case you know with the more of the acoustic sound uh kind of establishes the i mean it's 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 a dark tune and um, I think they capture that in that intro, uh, in the acoustic setting. I agree. So, I'm gonna do, uh, you, you can take it from here and go a couple more, but uh, you know, I, I, it's one of the, I have a horrible memory and I don't memorize song lyrics very well. And I have a hard time remembering song titles. I'll jumble up. Oh yeah. And I know I did this before and we were gonna edit this and we were talking about Van Halen's episode I, I know better, but I made reference to uh, Fair Warning's album, and as it's my favorite album, and, and I said Fair Warning is a fair, my favorite song, and it's Mean Streets, and I knew that after we got off and did this, like, yeah. I'm like, why did I say that? Yeah. So, you know, my brain, it moves a million miles an hour, and I do oh, yeah. forget things that I know <laughs> they were once there at one point in time. Yeah, but, you know, and consider just the vast number of songs that are out there and bands and the uh, number of decades. I mean, it's going to happen. So Thanks. And I think that's, I, I do the same thing. And I think, you know, even pulling these lists together, I mean, it's, uh, uh, we banter back and forth and it triggers memories of, oh yeah, that song, this song, and, and we correct each other about. Yeah, I was out I early, early, early this morning driving and just watching the sunrise here. And of course my brain started thinking about this list and what we were gonna do today. And I just had more songs I wanted to add. Yep. Here we are, so go for it. All right, moving on. Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. And if you saw our Halloween edition, uh, that was certainly on there. Vincent Price's opening dialogue just Again, if you don't even time. like Iron Maiden, go on to this link and just listen to the first minute. Yep. And just listen to what we're talking about. If yep. you don't like him, it doesn't matter. All you have, It's not even musical. It's just Vincent Price's voice. And yeah. it's just yep. spot on. Talk so, about setting the mood, the tone of uh, 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 Number yeah. of the Beast. <laughs> so. It's such a great song, but it, you know what a great introduction. Yep. Uh, it's one of my all my favorites. It's yep. just... It's so cool. It's just so classic. Next, Aerosmith, Walk This Way. ba da da dee ba da da dee bum. I mean... <laughs> that's all you need, right there. That's all you need. <laughs> and that sets the tone. And, and, you know, it was so popular, Run DMC decided to snag that and work with uh, Aerosmith. And boy, yep. did that cause major issues at the time. I remember that. And yep. everyone was all up in arms. How dare you mix rap with you know Aerosmith and Hard Rock and yet the band was very cool with that and you know Run DMC well, I'll tell you it, it, it propelled both bands back into the limelight because Aerosmith had kind of faded from view and uh, Run DMC was uh, they were in the rap realm and that was not quite that was not mainstream yet and oh, so okay. the combining both of those um and became the hit that it was, you know, propelled both. I mean, yeah, but it was also this crossover where you have, you know, what would be considered a very, very deep following of hard rockers, yep. you know. Yep. Um, you it kind of uh, African Americans listening to that music per se, not, yeah. not, not to the extent that you would go to a concert and you would see 
a 50 50 blend in the audience that wasn't yep. the case yep. and then the same thing with run dmc you don't didn't see too many suburban white guys out at their concerts um but then all of a sudden there was this mix and it became accepted and yep. look what happened to the rap industry after that well i was gonna say this this predated new metal and rap metal and all that and this was kind of the the propellant to that particular and say genre well about either side of it of the argument it doesn't really matter at this point it it set its mark in music and yep i think you know music took a big giant leap forward um and, and the results have been incredible i think there's so many other bands that have were inspired by that that created like that a perfect example is like 311 if you listen to 311 and all that the rap that goes on and how they construct their music it's, yep. it's really cool so anyway um, all right so then um led zeppelin and we have a, a twofer on this one can't leave out stairway to heaven uh you know again not much else needs to be said and then rock and roll um another one that just uh says amazing it all. opening so that says it all yeah, and if you listen to any live Led Zeppelin ever, just going online and li listening to different songs, every time they play uh, rock and roll, that intro, it's it it seems to get faster and faster no matter yeah. what yep. concert you ever listen to. It just seems yep. like, man, what what were they thinking, man? They just tore into that song, yep. and Jimmy Page shreds. So and the yeah. link that I have provided below is 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 a live version. So Perfect. you'll get yeah. you'll understand that if yep. you're watching. Why don't you um, take the next couple? Yeah, um, uh, Red Rider. And when I mentioned Red Rider to you, you were like, oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. For people, people that are not familiar, they're... this is one of those obscure bands that uh, a lot of people may not be familiar with or remember. I mean, if you grew up in the 80s, you would definitely have heard this all over the radio. And it's got such a uh, mis mysterious opening. And you can't go wrong with it. Yeah. You just, it's just such a cool it's, tune it's worth a listen check absolutely. out the link absolutely all right so um <clears throat> from red wider we dip into one of my favorites this was a pick of the week last week dire straits money for nothing and i i just love that song and i mentioned back in the last previous episode about you know um, my my introduction to that song and, and to the band itself if you if you've not really spent spent gosh i can't talk today if you haven't spent a whole lot of time listening to dire straits it's a good sunday listen just put the earbuds in and just yep. pull up any album it doesn't matter i think you will be distracted enough um that you want to just sit there and close your eyes and just listen to the whole album and re reinvite your brain to that musical quality that is mark Knopfler and yep. his genius so anyway and the link that I have to their performance is to their Live Aid performance when, and they had Sting on stage doing the opening because he sings it on the record and here you yeah. see him live doing it. So yeah, definitely Excellent. worth checking out. Um, and then another one that you don't hear, but you do hear the song a lot. It's actually an advertisement right now, but uh, Europe and the final countdown. I mean, talk about the keyboards and the synthesizer in yeah. the 80s. Yep. And they just masterminded this one. So yep. this was classy. Yep. Uh, um, how about you do the next few? Yeah. So the next is the Beatles. And Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is the one that we put up there for that one. And again, it just uh, it opens up the album. Um, and what more can be said about it? I mean, it's such, such it's an influential one. and important part of uh, rock history. So, and Sergeant the funny Pepper. thing is, you, if anyone knows me, they know that I'm not a huge Beatles fan. It's not that I dislike the Beatles. I'm just not a huge Beatles fan. I'd rather listen to the Stones any day of the week. Sure. Um, when it comes to the British invasion of those two bands, uh, but you know, Sgt. Pepper is what a, an interesting song when it came out. I mean, yeah. it just blew everybody out of the water. It was so innovative, and I really give them a lot of credit, aka the Beatles. Uh, for writing this and putting that out there. What a great... Well, and we had talked about other Beatles songs that had... Right. Um, but I really think just emphasizes intros. what they can do as a band. You know, they were really experimental for the time and who they were and what they oh, were trying certainly. to do. Oh, certainly. 
Yep. And I think this song really epitomizes just that. It, it yep. kind of encompasses like everything that they were kind of playing around with, all the different musical genres, you know, instruments, and, and here it is wrapped up into this one song. So yep. anyway, it was a good, it was a hard pick for us, but I think that was a good one. Yep. Uh, next, Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water. <laughs> Again, not much else needs to be said about that. All right, so can we, we we just have to talk about your wife and interject here and <laughs> how she feels about this song. She thinks it's way overplayed. Um, I don't think that's the case. I think it's just such a classic song that you think you may hear this all the time, but those three power chords that are struck there, we talked about this in another episode, and... I'm not going to get into that, but I just, yep. your wife is too much when we go over these things and sometimes yep. she's, uh, she just yep. cracks me. Down. So yep. Yep. your wife, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you could say the same for a lot of these songs. I mean, hotel California is heard so much and, uh, uh, you know, uh, even some of the who songs are heard so much, but then there are others like, you never hear Johnny B. Good. You never hear uh, Lunatic Fringe. Um, so, there, you know, there's a case for all that. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, so the uh, next one is The Rolling Stones and Satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction. Again. I, it speaks to many, many generations. Yeah. And still today. I mean, I, and, and The Stones, again, another band that they had so many songs that we could have picked that that had classic intros but we chose satisfaction so but i think that to... really is iconic to oh, them yeah oh yeah yeah you know what i mean i mean yeah there's plenty of other songs as we just mentioned but i mean that is such a classic stone song that yep. you don't even have to know who the stones are but you've heard it well and and it struck me as i was finding um videos to for all these songs the video that i found which shows how old this song is this uh is a 1965 performance in wow. ireland and and that's a year before i was born so <laughs> it shows how how long some of these songs have been around um and and even at that time it was a big song so for sure for sure. Okay, so let me kind of clean up the list a little yep. bit, and uh, let's move on here. So uh, we're gonna kind of end this up. We have two more here. We're gonna talk about one Actually, is. We've got. We should have four more. Mm. All right. Yeah, it should be at Boston. Yeah, I I thought we were gonna drop down and do that at the end. Not the Kinks. No. <laughs> no. I'm we gonna, gonna edit this out. Two. Those two are a surprise at the end. Don't you remember? Well, no, no, no. I know. All right. Well, why don't you continue on? Let me finish this up. And yeah, I'm gonna. We'll I'll edit this. this little bit out. No, you don't need to edit. I think people need to see how how we work here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we uh we try to outsmart ourselves here, but yeah. All right. Um, no, you're right. I think I'm the one that's a little off here today, but let's go to Boston. All right, so we're going to do Boston's foreplay. Um, foreplay goes into long time. So if you're listening to uh, the first album there and you hear that, you know, we, we were talking about these intros, and obviously, you know, when you hear Boston, there's this just incredible guitar work. And this is, an, I think, such a great introduction oh yeah how do you not like this i mean and if you're not familiar with it uh i think if you listen the to the link the link uh it you probably will end up saying oh yeah i do know that song yeah yeah, yeah. it's not one that you really know the name of the tune but you you hear it on on classic rock stations all the time yeah, uh, it's it's gonna be played for you know the next century, no problem. Yeah, and, there, and it's it, that always. typical Boston, um, just the power behind the the sound. You know, he um, Tom Schultz built these pedals and, and effects that just created this intense sustain. And uh, anyway, it just you know we were talking last week about certain guitars that we you just hear it and you just yeah, know. Yeah. 
you know, Carlos Santana has just one of those guitars or Mark Knopfler, you hear that guitar and you just know. Well, here's another example. This guitar, there is no one out there that plays like that, yep. sounds like that. Yep. You know it's Boston. Like, oh, yeah. Here, so. Yep. So another another classic song here by Rush, Spirit of Radio. This did make the list. And you'll see, you know, we had in our top of the five that didn't make it. Um, we had Tom Sawyer. So we went back and forth with which one was the stronger of the two. And I thought we, yep. we hit the right one here. So we could call it a two for the but whatever you want to do here. It, you know, Rush did make the list here. And so that's Spirit of Radio. And then we're going to have Jimi Hendrix, and I mentioned that just a second ago before we messed this all up. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Jimi had Purple Haze. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, several songs that could have made the list. Yeah. I mean, but, we talked about Voodoo Child, Slight Return Again, and yeah. uh, that's certainly up there on the list. But, you know, as far as classics go, be, you know, people do know Purple Haze more than, you know, Voodoo Child, Slight Return, unless you're yep. Big Hendrix. Yeah. So that's the only reason it made the list like it did. So I'm going to use the last song here as the segue into how we're going to finish up this this uh, episode, because we we discovered in this process that there are just songs that have really cool intros, but as as the intro goes, is it really a song or is it the intro? All right. So going with this. So we're going to end this one with the Kinks and you really got me and we're going to segue into this idea of how a song the intro going into the song it, could it be just the song or is it the intro into a song so with that being said um we're going to talk about van halen and eruption going into you really got me if you listen to the album that's how it's put on the album it goes right from eruption into you really got me so here's a great example of a copied song you know van halen is doing take on um, their take on the kinks and you know could could that song stand by its Itself, that is you really got me what if they had placed that further into the album and eruption was what it was as what eddie put it down as as a guitar solo but it's its own song because it, a it has its own title and it has its own track but if you listen to the album you you can't not you already anticipate what's coming out of eruption you already know the song that's coming into and it seems to work well, it was designed to be an intro to you to their cover of Re "You Really Got Me." Right. And and not only on the album, but if you listen to their concerts, in concert, he would do his eruption solo and usually extend it for minutes and lots of minutes. But then it always went into "You Really Got Me." Right. Um, and it's just a classic format. So the question really is: Is eruption just the intro to the song? Or is it its own song? We're going to leave that for you guys to figure well, out. Well, and I and I mentioned when we were talking about this, so you really got me with the, you know, if you listen to the Kinks version and, and Van Halen's version. I mean, again, it's an iconic intro unto Absolutely. itself. So Eruption, is Eruption an intro to an intro to a song? <laughs> or is it a song yeah. leading into the it's next so intro to the next blowing. song? So, yeah, we're into a time warp type thing, so... Um, Anyway, yeah, yeah, so I think that's uh, an interesting one. And then there was one more that we talked about, which we're going to finish with. And that is Queens, We Will Rock You. You can't not have this uh, this episode with this. So we, we talked about it, Queen being, you know, in that original list. But I think, you know, these two songs that we're talking about, Queen um, and Van Halen, but We Will Rock You into um, We Are the Champions. Yep. You know, they kind of go hand in hand. And, you know, you could also say that about Bohemian Rhapsody and how that song was developed and into different parts. But here's another example of, is the introduction, We Will Rock You, its own song going into, and, you know, they kind of are played simultaneously together. And there's plenty of, there's other examples too, yeah. just like this. Um, but you never hear on the radio or wherever you never hear we will rock you by itself by itself no and that's the I mean, thing you'll hear it you'll hear it in sports stadiums 
uh, by itself. I mean, again, the intro to "We Will Rock You" with the with the drums and everything. I mean that that intro unto itself is you know it. You don't even is, have to like classic rock and roll. Classic intro, but does the song "We Will Rock You" act as an intro to "We Are the Champions" as a whole, uh, or is it its own entity? And is "We Are the Champions" its own entity? So, I think that's a good place to uh, wrap up our our discussion here, and uh, be curious to see what people think. Yeah. So we'll wrap this up here. We hope you enjoyed this, but more importantly, this food for thought at the end, how we're yeah. kind of enticing you guys to think about how an intro is affects something. So that's why we gave you these last two things to think about here a little bit. Yep. And with that being said. Um, we're hoping to do a really cool Thanksgiving episode, which is coming up very shortly here, and we want you to check that out. Um, we hope you like this episode. We are Lead Balloon, Rock Talk. I'm Mark. This is Jim. Hope you like this episode. Come check us out. Um, have a good one. Take good. care. <laughs>